Hey, what's going on, Todd Shaw, with another episode of The Sawdust Dude. Awesome. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate you being here. Today, we're talking about the Graco LTS-17 Magnum Airless Sprayer. I've had this uh, this great product here for about, I don't know, been using this one about seven years. I would never, ever hand brush, roll, if I can get away with using this thing, trust me. I, I mean, deck time, but staying in the deck, oh man, it is such a breeze. And uh, you know what I always say, work, work, work smart, not hard. This is working smart right here, because I love this thing. It's a hey, I'm gonna teach you about some of the tips and tricks I've learned about this airless sprayer over the years. And I know you're gonna love this thing when you purchase it and get to work on your cabin, because it is a money maker it ain't a heartbreaker i'm telling you hey just some of the basics of it <clears throat> on the side here uh the on off switch it's located on this side this one even has a priming bulb you kind of a bulb priming bulb you just kind of match that a couple times to get that going but to get the sprayer primed up there's a middle section here and you just put it this way and you turn the lever down on the side like that and um, I'll demonstrate that for you this is what it sounds like because you really got to listen to the sound that the machine makes <clears throat> and because I use and once it primes up you just move that forward and I turn it about halfway here and of course that's the the more volume and then down on below uh, and I've used it with the roller too there's a roller instead of a spray gun a roller that goes on the end and that works pretty good uh i just like spraying better than i did the whole roller thing but uh, i've only used the roller once on a job and for a uh it was on a street and there were a lot of cars around and i had to worry about overspray and so i used the roller and it just it saved a lot of time here's some extra features that i've put on mine over the years kind of like oh man i wish this was you know whatever and so i've done it one of the big things that i've done you can kind of see i've added this is where the the hose normally would would stop but i i just doubled up the hose and that that just saved time from you know moving the um the sprayer around in a five gallon bucket now this one does work out for a five gallon bucket uh, you can use gallon buckets or whatever and i've got another graco a smaller version that uh, kind of sits on the floor and it's got a longer uh, pickup hose but uh, this one i just use this one all the time and um, it'll uh, it works great hey, here's some other features that i have on mine that i really like uh, this is the original gun that came with it and they they work fine they really do but I upgraded here recently to a contractor contractor grade of handle for the Graco. The handle is almost like a pistol grip. It just fits better in your in your hand. At first I didn't think it would make a difference, but you know, you I didn't think it would make a difference, but it really does. I mean, it fits my hand better and so, you know, when you're using it 8 and 10 hours a day, all that little stuff kind of adds up. Uh this gun is a little bit heavier um and then and this one's a lot lighter so I, I really like the contractor grade so if you're a pro dude I, i'd go with this this is definitely that it that is a couple hundred bucks you know and and this one came with it but uh i'm telling you once you get rolling and going and making money with this thing i i, I like the upgrade there another upgrade that i really like is the uh using an extension like this and you can see i have several different here but especially when you're using um when you're staying in a deck you don't have to bend over and it's almost like a golf club and you can sit there and just kind of go back and forth with this extension and i've even put them together like that when i'm up on a gable end and having to do the the soffits and uh it, it just works out so well so I've upgraded the gun to the contractor to the contractor model. Hey, that was a cool deal. Got the extension on here. Another upgrade that I've done this year is this little swivel 
and this is so nice and so especially when i'm up and i'm staining the logs you know i can i can pivot this around so instead of like moving my hand all you know like some some kind of contortionist or something like that i can let i can work smart not hard i can let this do the work so this will pivot different ways here and then i can pivot the head with the jet in it and it will uh it will get the angle that i need and so i really don't have to move my ladder uh, the extension will get me the reach and this will get me the angle that i need and that is such a cool little feature there this always kind of reminds me of like a the old school carburetors and when you had jets in the carburetor one of the things that you want to do and you can look on the chart from graco depending on whether you're using stain or paint uh, and if it's a transparent or semi-transparent stain you want to use a different size jet and these are just replace yeah, the right size jet for whether it's stain paints or whatever you're shooting okay so make sure that works out and those just simply <coughs> slide in and lock down in the gun and you'll feel that last little click down there you kind of push and it clicks also you want to make sure when you're changing out these and it's easier if this is loose from the gun to change out the jet. Right, if you need to change out your jet right here or this needle if you want to call it that uh, if you want to change out this this you have to loosen the tip because you see i can't pull it out like this so I just simply just loosen it from here and now that'll pop just straight out. <clears throat> so once again, just loosen this from the gun and then you can change your jet or your needle uh, in your gun. This jet will become clogged. What you need to do is just spin it around this way so that the feathers of the arrow are pointing towards the spring and then that will clean out this jet and just flip it back around okay so this is spraying and that's cleaning spraying cleaning okay <laughs> if you want that to happen two things that you need to watch out for is this this really always needs to be tight where this this piece goes to the gun that has to be tight because if it's not it'll drip and you'll get stain or paint everywhere now if you really want to get it all over you if this little jet right here is just turned slightly just kind of like that it will cause so much pressure and every weak point and every spot kind of along here it will back spray all over you and i promise you you will be covered you can't let go of this trigger fast enough okay so always make sure that this is all the way straight okay that's kind of parallel to the gun because if it's twisted you're gonna get covered here's another little tip on the jets <clears throat> that i learned from somebody else because uh, one of the big things that you always want to watch for is overspray especially when you're using an airless sprayer uh, one of the things that i do i just use a little short burst you always keep the that the gun moving little short burst and then cover your log or your siding that way uh, if you hold it down and just kind of let it spray really you'll have a cloud of paint or stain all around you and then that kind of floats especially i'm up here in the mountains and the wind loves to blow so you got to keep it just kind of controlled so i do control controlled sprays as i'm going all right what i learned over the years that i started getting over spray and i was like gosh, i'm using the same size jet and everything what i didn't realize was this and it kind of goes back to the automotive days was you know the carburetor jet finally gets worn out you wouldn't think that the volume of paint or stain going through here would actually make the hole bigger inside of here but it does and so i found out that probably about every 60 to 120 gallons i got to change these things out because that little jet on the end the hole just gets bigger and the more stain that's coming out the more overspray you're gonna have so about every 60 gallons or so you gotta change these little needles like this okay hey about every third job i really give this thing a really really good cleaning 
and uh, making sure that uh, running hot water through the lines and getting all the latex uh, water-based stains or paints out of the system and so the, just just a simple process just like you would load up paint in it you just take warm water and run it through the system and so it cleans out all your lines this pickup screen down here you want to keep this thing and i i change these out and i keep them washed out if i if i leave it over the weekend i make sure i take a plastic bag and wrap it over to keep the air out of it but they do get clogged up and that's your first line of defense and so you want to really make sure that these things uh, stay clean. You can buy them online. I'll have a link on Amazon where you can buy these. They're about 10 bucks a piece, so, uh, but you want to keep them all cleaned out. Now there are two styles of these. One is threaded like this, and uh, so it fits almost like a hose, like a garden hose in. Then there's another one where it's just the opposite it'll be like a nut on this end and then this end is threaded so make sure you get the right one for your Graco machine and they just simply just thread back in there like that the thing you want to do is with the uh, with the gun there is you just kind of lift that up and just unthread this and there is a screen or a filter inside of the gun here and it fits down in the handle and just pull this out like this. And you see all the trash and the gunk in there. And so I just go and I run warm water through this and keep this cleared out. This little filter in here is a good lifesaver because that's the last filtration or the last filter that collects junk and gunk that builds up inside or that might be in your paint bucket or might be in the stock or the paint. And so that just fits in there. And so that is one last screen, one last protection before it gets to the actual jet on the nozzle of the gun. Here's how you really wanna prime the system. And uh, it, it doesn't take really long at all for it to catch prime. And I've got water in the line now where I'd cleaned it out earlier, but I want you to listen and just kind of, what you need to do is pick up on the sounds. I'm gonna go ahead and push this down. That's in the prime mode. I've got it to the middle section here and that's the prime section. I'm gonna reach over here and cut it on. You hear how it's like a real high RPM? I hear a little different sound. Now I'm gonna take this, flip this up. And that's all there is to it. So you let it prime and cycle through and you'll hear just a little different sound in the RPMs and you, you, you flip that down to flip it up. And now the system's prime and there's pressure all in this line and you're ready to spray. Now I've got water in here right now. And so I'll take an extra bucket or we're over here. We talk about you know time's money and money's time so one of the things if you look at this fence what i've got to do and it's pretty lengthy i don't need, really know how it'll take me about 10 gallons to do all this fence and you can kind of see i got to do both sides of this property or, or this fence line but it would take you forever to paint in here to paint in here and actually get paint on the inside so it would probably take you about a week maybe with a helper I can spray this in a day by myself. And so th this Graco sprayer is just a great way of working smart and not hard, okay? So let's do a little time lapse. Hey, cool deal, all right. Thanks for watching another episode of The Sawdust Dude. Hey, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit that notification bell. Oh yeah, I'll see you real soon. Thank you.